Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another Nico's World video on Tekken 8, and we're here to talk about my favorite character in the game, Lars Alexanderson. Now, this is gonna be an updated video from, whoops, I don't mean that. This is gonna be an updated video um, uh, from my last one on how to apply Lars and, you know, such and such and such of uh, that nature and everything. But, obviously, new game, new things, new toys, new moves. How do we use them? How do we move about them? How do we how do we go about using this character that we all like? So, without further ado, let me let me stop pressing buttons. Let me uh, try to my best to um, I guess show you guys how to apply Lars and utilize his tools. So, we are gonna start with. Uh, the, like his pokes, I talked about it in this video. He's still there. You got down back one, one four, down four one, one jab. Uh, you have two one. His new string, two one, amazing string. We'll get into that later. Uh, and his two is a uh, one two, down four, generic down four, same down two, uh, one two, same same pokes is still there. Um, but. As I said before, and I said it in my previous video, that down back one has been nerfed. They made it minus one instead of plus one now. So usually, if you did this low poke, you would check them with a wall standing four because that's within uh, that would trade with a jab because you're plus one, and this is 11 frames. Um, 11 minus one is 10, so that would trade with a jab, but now it won't trade anymore, unfortunately. So now it might just be a better idea just to back off after this. Or if you are going to do something, definitely, I mean, you definitely want to stick with this still. Do something fast. Or just maybe do this. Or you can do this. Um, that will crush jabs. Like this. And actually, we'll, we'll get into that later. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that later. But um, yeah, so those are his pokes. Um, so that's all still there. Uh, he has a, his new down forward too. Amazing button, 14 frames, very fast. Um, he can go into stand from it into silent entry. Um, it's a uh, plus one if you don't go into stance, but on counter hit, it guarantees a knockdown for uh, a, gu a guaranteed uh, silent entry one um, for 38 damage. Very good. Um, definitely uh, use this kind of to like fish for it a little bit. Kind of like that. It's kind of a fish for it. It has amazing, it has decent range, very good range. It's very fast. You can catch somebody slipping and if you get the counter hit, you get that. Very good. So very good button. Definitely way better than what you had in Tekken 7. Um, so that's great, use that. Um, it is unsafe though. It is minus 11 on block. So if you do this, they can jab punish you if you do this, but you can go into stance and if they're still jabbing and you go into stance and you do this, it will it will uh, go under that, but that is risky in itself um, because they could do it uh, 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 fast enough mid to check you like a down for one to get you out of that. So um, you can go into stance with this but be careful how you do it um, and like I said before in my previous video um, it's not always the best idea to go into stance on block you would like you would kind of want to avoid that as much as possible um, try not to do this too much sometimes I do it um, but it's not the greatest idea there will be times where you are going to do this um, just just keep in mind, anytime you do this on block, you are taking some level of risk because this, um, if your opponent is re react fast enough, he could check you out of any of your options. All of that will be, will lose to a down four one. If you go into stance on block. So you definitely don't want to, you want to try to avoid going into stance on block. If you can, there will be times where you kind of, I don't want to say you have to, but I still do sometimes. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. Um, 
So he has that. His pokes are good. He has down for one. Very good. Down for one. Same old, same old. Minus one, still good. Um, his, oh, two one. Let's get into two one now. So they took away his old two uh, two one uh, in Tekken Seven. It used to be two one three and two one four. It had extensions before, and that was delayable. Now you have this, which is way better. It is a ten frame Punisher. It's amazing. I love this move. I use this a lot, um, and it puts him into his new stance called limited entry. Um, now, limited entry has two options. It has the low and the mid. Now, the low and the mid are both 16 frames, and if you connect this, you're plus eight. They cannot step, they cannot move around, they have to eat the mix up. So if you do this, they have to deal with both options. They cannot sidestep, they cannot do any, they have to deal with it. So that's very good, uh, very good buff. Use this string. Um, if you find your opponent is doing anything unsafe within the, uh, the parameters of 10 frames, use this string. Um, and uh, so when you go into limited entry, you have um, a couple more options, right? So you have the mid, like I said, you have the low, like I said, but you can also do this if you uh, delay it a little bit. to back off or back away. It'll take a, a little bit of, not, it's not super hard to do. It might take you a little bit to kind of get used to it, but I like doing this sometimes. Um, and let me, show you, let me show you something else. This is what I really like. Um, I, I, do, I need to use this move more myself, but um, his wall standing three. This is really awesome. His wall standing three. So let's say you have your uh, uh, opponent conditioned, right? And uh, cause he, let's say he keeps, he like disrespected this move a couple times after you hit him a couple times, right? And now let's say he respects you now. What you can do now, wall standing three. Wall standing three, that is plus uh, four on block if you go into limited entry but it is neutral if you just do it raw so what that means is you can loop this if you want you can kind of bait them into pressing a button it is a high though it is duckable so don't be too crazy with this but um you can loop this so uh since you're plus four and in limited entry both of the mid, both the mid and the low option are, uh, they both crush highs. The mid crushes highs and the low obviously crushes highs because it's a low. So they cannot, um, they cannot jab, uh, jab you out of this. They have to, the only way to beat that in that situation is to, uh, they would have to, um, dick jab. It'll be, uh, it'll be a down forward one. It'll be all of that. The only thing that they could do about that is dick jab. But if, let's say you see them dick jabbing, you could do this, right? You're doing this, you could orbital. You could orbital, that will go over the dick jab, or you could sidestep. So if you see if you see somebody like trying to dick jab you uh, out of this, you could do this, sidestep, boom, kill him. So you could do something like that. Um, so, yeah, so you could do a lot off of a 10 frame punish. So you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, uh, hold on, you could do this, you see what I mean? You can get very creative with that. That is a nice loop that they gave him. You could be very creative, you could be very hard to deal with. Yeah, so definitely try to mix your opponent up. Lars is a mix-up machine now, so you could definitely try to uh, take advantage. You could definitely try to take advantage of uh, some of the things that he, the, the new toys that he got. 
So uh, that's limited entry, and that's some that's some ways to um, loop uh, some of the things that you could do. Um, what else we have? We have uh, oh his house sweep, right? His house sweep. So in Tekken Seven, it was four 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 three, right? Well, they made this minus three on hit now, so it's technically not your turn after this. But it is chunky for thirty two damage, but. They gave him the new string, and I'm sure we've all seen this before. This. You definitely want to use this because you're sacrificing damage, a little bit of damage for uh, plus frames. You're gonna be your plus nine. So they cannot press when you do this, because if they do this and they press and you hit them with that, that's a counter hit and that's big damage. So that's your go-to mid check if you think that they're gonna press. Or you could do this into this. Um, be careful though about this because that is not real with this. Because um, you're plus nine and this comes out in 22 frames. So that is uh, 13 frames, 13 frames. So that would trade with a down forward one or a jab. And if it, and, or not a jab, it wouldn't trade with a jab. It would actually knock you uh, out of the air with a jab. And since Lars is technically airborne, that, that would count as a flo uh, float. So you want to, I do this all the time. I do definitely, I do this a lot. Um, Cause it's just plus frames into plus frames. But uh, you definitely don't want to abuse it too much. Cause if your opponent is paying attention and he knows Lars, he will jab you out of that. But he is also taking a risk as well. Um, so it's definitely good though. Take advantage of it. Um, another thing you could do uh, in this situation, since you're in dynamic entry, you can grab them. So you could do that into that. You could do this into the stomp. Um, the stomp, if you uh, just do it like this, it is uh, minus on hit. So it's minus three. But if you do this and go into stance automatically, like you gotta go right away, it's plus four. So if you do this low, um, you might as well just press forward, just commit to it at that point. If you if you're in if in your head, if you hit this and you in your head you're like, I'm gonna do the stop, just press forward right after it. You might as well just commit to it. The only time, the only time I will say is not to commit to it though is if your opponent has rage. If your opponent has rage, he will panic rage R and he will hit you out of that. So don't, so be mindful of your opponent's health bar. Cause if you think he, if always, always, always keep rage in mind. I struggle with this all the time. I, I need to do better at this myself, but you always need to keep in mind if of your opponent's health and if he's in rage or not. How I feel about Lars is that Lars can get a lot of, he can get his his offense going, but if you don't control it, you'll, you're gonna you're gonna crash and burn. You're gonna run right into a wall. So you need to be able to control Lars and his speed. So that's definitely something you want to uh, practice. Sometimes, Lars, like Lars is really fast, but sometimes you want to practice restraint. You don't just want to go in and, and mad dog somebody. You want to, I mean, yeah, the main, the name of the game of Tekken is aggression, but you don't, but you want to, it needs to be controlled aggression. You don't want to just go crazy and just press a couple, a bunch of crazy buttons and just do a bunch of crazy shit. It's not going it, to, you're going to crash and burn. It's all about controlled aggression. You want to control the, the match, it's control the pace. So that being said, always keep your opponent, uh, uh, opponent's health in mind. Um, uh, without further ado, I'm uh, moving on from that. Um, we're going to get into, uh, let's see what else is, yeah, uh, back three, four. I talked about this before. Great whiff punisher. Use this. If you see some, somebody whiff from a distance, um, definitely utilize this. Oh, I forgot it's three plus four, three plus four. Three plus four. This move is basically the same as this, but it's a heat engage. It's the same speed, but 
It's uh, it's just um, yeah, it's eating gauge, like I said. So basically, it's the same thing. Uh, you want to use this as a whip punisher. If you see anybody whip anything, it has amazing range, and then you're charging at them with plus 17. So definitely use this. Very good tool. If you see anybody with anything, boom, hit them. So you want to uh, be uh, keep a watchful eye on the, on uh, your opponent. See them whiff, boom, just like that. Uh, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, his his dynamic entry for uh, one two, very good. Um, heat engager. It is a launcher. If you press forward on heat. So uh, definitely don't be afraid to use that. It's uh, good. You could catch somebody slipping. As I said before in my old or my other Tekken 7 video of how to use Lars, it's a good get in move. It still is. It's the same thing. Has uh, with forward three. Uh, it's uh, still the same property, but actually they buffed it. And I said this before in my previous video. It's plus one now plus one so that is good because that means your jab is gonna beat their jab so if they if you do this and they block it it's technically your turn which means that you could do something like this right so say you're plus one and if you think that they're gonna press or jab or whatever you can do this into this and guess what you're in limited entry at plus eight in their face so again so let's say you hit them, right? Or you uh, they blocked it, right? And then you respond with 2-1. Now you're in limited entry. And then they have to eat the mix-up. So take advantage of this. A nice thing, uh, another nice thing about this string is that it does jail. So if, uh, if the first hit is blocked, if the first um, elbow is blocked, they, uh, they can't duck the second hit. It jails, which is nice. So you don't really have to worry about the second hit being ducked, which is very nice. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, this move is still good. Good uh, um, mid-range, mid-mid. It's good, has good range. Uh, it's plus six, I believe. I think it's plus six. Yeah, plus six. It's plus six. Very good mid check from a, from a distance to kind of catch somebody slipping. Boom, boom. And since you're plus six, you could do this after that. So you could do this, this, boom, boom, to get them away, get some distance. Um, you could do this, this into down forward one. That's always good. If you think they're going to step, you still have back one. As I said before, they did nerf this move. It does not uh, counter hit knockdown anymore. But it is still a good mid. Use this if you think people are going to step you. Still very good. Um, down forward 3-3. Three, three. Uh, still the same, as I said before. Uh, you can cancel it. Um, if you cancel it, you're plus 8 in their face. And again, your go-to mid, always your go-to mid, if you think that they're going to press. Boom. It's uh, dynamic entry 2. This is always your go-to mid to keep them honest. If you think that they're gonna press on your stance after you hit them, boom. Make sure to, to stop them from, you know, messing with your plus frames. Um, another thing you could do, um, since as I said before, you remember how I said this was plus one. You could do this into this, and you're still plus. You're still plus technically. Um, yeah, so you could do stuff like that. Um, down back four, still the same. Still the same. Uh, every large player will use this move. I am not the biggest fan of this move, to be honest, but it is what it is. It's 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 basically his main like go to low. If you are a large player, you're gonna use this low. Um, it's don't do not be stupid with this low. Do not abuse this low, because if they block this, you will die. Do not be too reckless with it. Use it sparingly. It has good range. 
It hits from very far. It hits a counter hit launcher. It does crush highs, but do not abuse this. Be smart with this. Be unpredictable with it, because if you keep doing it, one of these days they're gonna duck it and they're gonna launch. So don't abuse this. Um, don't don't abuse Lars's lows in general too much, because his, his lows are not the best. That's not that's not his his. Uh, that's not where he shines at uh, for the most part. That's not his best stuff. But um, you have safer lows. While crouching down, uh, down one plus two. Um, it's only minus twelve on uh, block plus one. Um, he had, uh, and then he has this low poke, which is still plus one. Um, that's then it's minus tw uh, twelve on block. So. But it, it can be choreographed. I said this in my previous video. So uh, just be smart with how you utilize his lows. Try not to be too obvious. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Arc Blast. Still the same. Unsafe, minus 13. Still the same. Still a launcher. Still his go to 15 frame launcher. Um, he has four back to one, 14 frame. 14 frame launcher, very damaging. Um, 12 frame Punisher. So if you see something that's minus 12, you can do 4, 2, 4 um, for the knockdown. Um, or if you want to go into stance with plus frames and you know that something is minus, you can do this. Because now you're plus 6 in their face at silent entry. And um, uh, keep in mind, Lars can uh, transition when he's in silent entry to two different stances, dynamic entry and silent entry, so, or uh, limited entry. So he could do this, or he could do this. So keep in mind, if you kind of want to make your opponent kind of second guess his existence, it is a gimmick though. They can uh, stop the transition if they press, but if, if you see them pressing, if uh, and they stop you, they try to stop you from uh, Going into limited entry, that means that they didn't respect this in the first place, which means that you can do this. Right? So if you see if you see anybody that presses on your frames anytime you go into stance, just know that the next time you go into stance, check them. Do not let people press on your frames. Make sure to check them. Make sure that the don't let people get away with that because people love the press buttons. So let's so make sure that they don't, uh, you know, press on your frames. Handle that. Um, so that's one thing. Um, he has dynamic entry, and if you press back, he goes. He can go from dynamic entry to dynamic entry, um, and then. You can only do it uh, once. You can't spin like forward, back, or forward to dynamic entry. You can only do it once. But once you spin back and you spin forward, it brings them into silent. And then you can go back and forth. Like that. And remember, anytime you're in silent entry, silent entry, you have, you can transition to two different stances. Silent, dynamic, silent, dynamic, silent, limited, limited, dynamic, limited, dynamic, limited, silent. So it's 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 you have three stances, and it's kind of think of it kind of like um, it's like a thing. It's like a it's like a, you have a triangle. It's 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 three different stances: dynamic, silent, limited. Limited, there is, uh, as I said before, you have the mid and the low. Um, the low is plus four on hit. Uh, it's it's only minus 12 on block, which is nice. Um, so after you hit them with this, um, you can, uh, if you, uh, they can dick jab, um, and that would beat your go-to mid, this right here. And which is in this minute is a counter hit launcher. So if they dick jab, that would beat that. But if you think that they're gonna dick jab, the thing that won't beat it, or is this, your while standing two. That will beat any other anything they try to do. So 
you could do that. And um, as I said before, once you have them respecting your frames, guess what you could do? You see? So definitely, um, Lars is a type of character that once you have them conditioned, he is a serious, difficult, difficult thing to deal with. He, he can be very difficult to deal with if you have them conditioned. Make sure you have your opponent conditioned to respect you. And then once you have them conditioned to respect you, that's when the fun can come in. That's when you can do whatever the fuck you want. So, well, I shouldn't say whatever you want, but you know, you can have some fun. <laughs> so definitely try to have them conditioned uh, as much as possible. Throw this out a couple times. And then once you think you have them conditioned to respect the follow-up mid, maybe you can pull this off. Um, they got rid of his health sweep from dynamic entry. So your go-to lows is the stomp. And this low poke, which is plus one on hit. So you could do this into this. Or you could do this and then just one jab. And that's still plus one. One jab, uh, jabs are plus one on block, so you can do that. Um, you can also go into limited entry after this low. So some things I like to do, sometimes I like to do it from uh, a distance. So like, uh, maybe I'll do something like, let me see, maybe I'll do something like, because it has, it has some range to it. So sometimes this will like stop them in their tracks. So you could do this, things like that. Um, but I remind you, it's only plus one. So you're not super advantageous. You can jab at them, but keep in mind that you, you like I said, you're not heavily plus. So sidestepping might be a good idea or just blocking. Um, so remember, plus one, you're not, it is your turn technically, but they, they, it, there's a lot of wiggle room for your opponent, basically. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, let's see, what else does he have? Um, oh, let's go over his heat. Oh, let's go over his heat. The heat is the best part. This move is ridiculous. I love this move. This is a, this is, this move is called Rebellion. It's a 19 frame power crush plus on block mid. Very good, very good. And look at, look at the, look at the, look at the range on this. That has a lot of range. And basically, it's his, it's his uh, forward uh, 3 plus 4. You can basically say, I don't care what you're going to do, because it's basically like forcing yourself, it's forcing Lars into, a, uh, or forcing your opponent into a mix-up situation. They have to guess. Um, so that's very good. Definitely, definitely take advantage of this. This is an amazing move. Um, and if you do this, guess what you could do? You can go into limited entry because you're in silent entry. So what you could do is something like that. Um, you can do the mid and the mid, oops, the mid is a launcher when you're in heat which is very good. Um, and another thing, keep in mind, since you have a 10 frame Punisher that puts you into limited entry, you are a very, that is a very dangerous mix up for, uh, for your opponent because now they have to guess between a low that is 35 damage or a mid, which is a launcher.
So, Lars in heat. Anything that puts him into limited entry is definitely, that's a definitely dangerous mix-up to be in, especially when he's in heat. So keep that in mind. Uh, limited entry is buffed. The moves from that stance is buffed when he's in heat. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, this move is amazing. And what you could do when if you press forward after your silent entry, your, you could do silent entry one. And if you press forward, it's a launcher. Um, it's basically what Lars had in Tekken Seven, which was his rage drive. But it's 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 like rage drive with extra steps, basically. But in uh, in uh, heat, that becomes the silent entry one becomes a launcher, and if it's blocked, it's plus five on hit or on uh, block. So if you do this and press forward after you do the silent entry one, very good. Uh, definitely recommend doing that to get to get some pressure. And some things I like to do when I do this. Let me show you right now. Some things I like to do when I do this. I like to do that sometimes. You see? Because, I mean, they can disrespect that, but if you think that they're gonna disrespect you, back four. Back four will hit them, um, or it'll trade with a jab, but that won't be a good trade with for them because um, I believe you're still plus after this, so uh, if it trades, so it's still your turn. Or if you want something faster, you can do this. It's 14 frames, and that will beat anything that they do. So, uh, and if they pressed, remember that this has a counter hit property, which guarantees you a silent entry one. So keep that in mind. Um, so that's very good. And then this move, this heat smash. His heat smash is amazing. It's very, very freaking good. Um, it has ridiculous range. It hits from very far. It's, it, it feels, it's 18 frames, but it feels like it's faster. It feels like it's faster to me. Um, so you, I used this as a whiff punishment before, where I've seen somebody whiff something and just caught them with that. It hurts. It's like 50 something damage, I think. It hurts. Um, and it's heavily plus. It is definitely your turn if this is blocked. Because they're they're at minus 10 and force crouch. So they cannot, it, it is very ill-advised for them to press <laughs> on that. Um, and uh, another thing, like I said before, remember, remember, always remember your options in dynamic entry. You have this, you have this, 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 and this. Or you can go back if you want. So again, after this, remember you're in limited entry. And another thing you could do in limited entry is to grab, right? So let's say you do this, grab. So you could use that to your advantage. It's very good. It's a one plus. It's a one plus two break. They have to. They would have to break it by pressing one plus two. So definitely a viable strat. Definitely use this. Or you can get gimmick uh, a little bit more gimmicky and go in transition into uh, his next stance. Or you can back up if you want. You can do whatever you want. The sky's the limit in, in that situation. But remember, if you ever see them press a button on that on your frames, remember that. And when you remember that, put them in the same situation and kill them for that. There are always remember if somebody presses on your plus frames. Keep that in mind, always. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, let's see what else. A four three is still the same, still evasive, uh, still launch punishable on block. Use this as a panic move. I said this before in my uh, other video. Use this as a panic move. Do not just throw this all, you know, crazy, because if it is blocked, you will die. So do not abuse that. Um, they made his orbital a little bit safer. It used to be minus nine, now it's minus eight, which I guess is nice because sometimes in Tekken 7, you would get a uh, jab punish for this. So I guess they made that in a way that, um, uh, they made it like a little bit harder for that to happen, I guess, which is nice. 
Um, I think it's a, I think it's a little bit more evasive now. I've crushed highs with this now or before, so I think it, they made it a little bit more evasive. It kind of feels like it, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's four four one plus two. Very uh, still the same. I talked about this before. One of his better buttons. This move has been buffed. It is a, excuse me. It is a uh, counter hit launcher, and it just counts as a regular counter hit launcher now. That used to just automatically bound, but it doesn't anymore. So now it's just a, it acts as like it acts as like this now. It's just a regular counter hit launcher now, which is very nice. Um, down two, use his down two. I talked about this before. I can't stress this enough. It's a very good mid. Take advantage of it. It's very plus on hit, and it's only and it's uh, only in its neutral on block and forces crouch. Um, I didn't talk about this in my other video, but since it forces crouch, you technically, I don't, I'm not going to say you're at an advantage, but um, if they do a move, like a while standing move, and you jab after this, it'll beat that. They'll, they'll run, because they're going to run into the jab. You understand what I mean? So if you, so if you, let's say you do get a jab punish, and then you do this. You could do this if you think that they're gonna uh, do like a wall standing move, and that'll beat that. Um, you can do uh, a dick jab if you think that they're gonna do something that's not faster than or slower than 10 frames. So you could do that. Um, or if you think you have them kind of controlled and conditioned a little bit, you could do this. If you want a mid option, you could do that. If you want something that tracks, you could do wall standing uh, too, because it that has decent tracking. Um, uh, and again, it like all Lars's moves kind of connect with one another, right? So let's say you hit him and you're plus eight and you have him conditioned. Guess what you could do? You're, you're crouched, right? If you're pressing and holding down. Oh, that's another thing. You can decide if you want to stand from this move or if you want to crouch. So let's say you hit them and you're plus eight. Oh, they're not going to want to press, right? So guess what you could do? See what I mean? So Lars has ways to loop his move sets all together. They all link together. You just have to figure out how to put the pieces together with your frames. So um, definitely just uh, try to get creative. You can get very creative with Lars and his offense. Um, the pressure is there. Um, he is absolutely stronger than he was from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8. He is I easily A tier. I wouldn't say S. People have been saying S. I don't think he's S, um, but definitely A. But that's besides the point. This is a large tutorial, so let's get back into it. Um, you have this, the same move. It's the same uh, thing in Tekken 7. Not the best string. It is a counter hit launcher still. Um, it is highly delayable, uh, but I, I, I don't use this string too much. Um... Another thing about his stances, they are all very delayable. Everything about his stances are delayable. They are all delayable. Every single thing about stances. So you could look how long you could hold this for. You could hold that for very long. So let's say you hit them. You could hold it for a decent uh, amount of time to make your opponent kind of second guess because they're like, oh, he's going to do a low? Nah, bro. Mid. So you can delay it for a long time, but be careful, though. They can disrespect you if you delay it too much. So if you don't want to... So the, the whole purpose of delaying it is to make your opponent second guess themselves. Um, it's to... Uh, it's to... It's to make them kind of um, think you're going to do something when you really was going to do something else, right? So um, the delayable, uh, use the delay. Very good. Um, his dynamic entry three. This is a this is an amazing move. An amazing move. It's a heat engager. It's a homing. It's plus on block. It's plus three. 
but there is a solid weakness to this. Um, let me sh actually, you know what? Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. I'll show you right now. Let me show you. Let me show you. There is a there is a weak there is a weakness to um to his dynamic entry three. It's it's kind of sucks, but um let's have him. Let's see. Let's have him record. Oh no no no! I want to do that. Let's have, I press it again. So this. Okay. Um, whoops! Not that. Let me do it over. Record again. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, let's see if I can make him... Okay, so let's let's record that, and let me show you why this has a kind of a fatal flaw to this. That. Your opponent can power crush the mid. So that is a weakness to this string. Um, and they can step. So they have, your opponent has two options in this situation. They can step to Lars's uh, right, which is his weak side. So definitely, definitely keep that in mind. You absolutely want to keep that in mind. It's a good move, um, but there is a weakness to it. They can power crush to it uh, through it, and they can sidestep through it. Or to, to his to Lars's right. Um. So, and the thing is, another thing is, um, you automatically go into silent entry off of his dynamic entry three. Or uh, yeah, so you, so once you are in that situation, you're committed. So, to beat the power crush off, but I mean, you have options. You do have options though. Let me show you right now. Right? So you could do that. And you could do that. Let me show you right now. Right. So if you do the low, the low is a counter hit launcher. So that will shut down the power crush. And if you think that they're going to step, Let me have him do it again. Hold on. You have your silent entry uh, four. So there's there's things you can do to shut down those options that they have, but the uh, the more than likely thing that they're probably gonna do is the power crush. Um, they're more than likely not gonna step. But again, and I always say this about playing Tekken, you always want to keep in mind to how your opponent responds to anything and everything that you do. So if you see them, if you see them stepping, um, if you see them stepping this and you saw that, put them in that same situation again and, and then do the homing move. If you saw them do a power crush to shut that down, maybe throw out a low, get the counter hit. Always keep in mind of what they did in response to what you're doing. It'll give you a hint on how to defeat your opponent. Always keep that in mind. That's just, that's that's not even Lars, that's just any character in general. You should always keep in mind how people respond to anything that you do. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, so there is, a, there is a, a weakness to that, so keep that in mind. I should say, I should mention that, um, I should mention this. Uh, so his heat smash is a launcher. Uh, the second hit is a launcher. Um, yeah, that's a, a, a lot of range. See, oh man. Oh wow, I think you have to delay it a little bit. It's a little finicky. It's a little finicky. I know it is a launcher though. Yeah, you have to, it is a launcher. You just have to like hold it a little bit. 
yeah see so it is a launcher um it is a little finicky actually there you go yeah so um if you hit them with the second hit uh you do have to wait for them to come down a little bit wait a little bit boom 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 yeah so uh keep that in mind um oh he has new bounds now this is a bound uh this is a bound um this is a bound um i feel like i forget oh this is a bound his his uh limited entry two is a bound oh this is a bound and for some reason i don't know why they made this a bound but this is a bound I don't, I don't know why they made that a bound. I, I, I've tried to understand that. I don't know why they did that. They should have just kept his standing four a bound. I don't know why they made this one a bound, but it is what it is. Because if you play Tekken 7, Lars, your go-to after his wall standing one was standing four, but it doesn't bound anymore, which sucks. So now what you want to do is up forward three. Oh, yeah, that's a bound. His silent entry... Uh, one plus two. Yeah, but I don't know why they. I don't know why they. I don't. I have no idea why they took away his standing four bound. It uh, this this move is pretty much useless outside of bound. Now that they took that away, I mean, it, it breaks the wall. If your opponent is to the wall, so you can do that, I guess. But I mean, it. it I don't know. I just it's kind of whack. I don't know why they made got rid of that. But um, you could also use this. That also breaks the wall. His um, his uh, back one plus two. Um, they made this safe now. Plus nine on hit, safe on block. Very nice, evasive. It's definitely slow wall splats. It's it is on the slower side. Has okay range. Has decent range. Um, I use this sometimes, but not all the time. I, I sometimes do this, and, and I'm not, it's not, you shouldn't be too uh, afraid to throw it out, because it is safe on block, it is just, a, it is just a little bit slower, but it is heavily plus on hit though, so you can, you can do this, into this, and uh, that works, um, so yeah, that's pretty good, or that's, that's, it's okay, um, not my go-to, but it's okay, so his heat engagers, he has... Uh, four, one, two. He has three plus four. He has, um, uh, silent entry one. He has, I'm just trying to think of him. Everybody, I think everybody has five universally. So that was this one, this one, silent entry. So there should be two. Oh, this one. Dynamic entry three, and then um, uh, what am I forgetting? Which was I forgetting? Uh, one, one, one. One, one, one. One, one, one. That's another move. This is an important move that Lars has that you definitely want to um, take advantage of this. Uh, so, what is one, one, one? Why? What is? What is? Why do we use the string? Why is the string here? So, one, one, one is a uh, counter hit. So, so if you get this string on counter hit, the whole string is guaranteed. But if you don't get it on counter hit, then uh, it can get blocked. And if it's blocked, it's minus 12 on block. They made, it's, it's way better than it was in Tekken 7 because in Tekken 7, this was minus 14 for some reason, for some stupid ass reason, it was minus 14. But now it's only minus 12. So why do we, how do we use this move? When do we use this move? So we use this move when your opponent is getting a little too crazy. And what I mean by that is, let's say that, let me put it this way. This move is for people who are just going, um, let, me, let me show you, I wanna show you. So let's say that your opponent is just doing some all kinds of, all kinds of stuff, right? And you're like, okay, you need to chill out. You need to stop. 
That's what it is. This move is basically chill out. That's that's the best way I could describe that move. Chill the fuck out. Back off. That's what that move is. And it's um it's it's uh 10 frames fast. So it's as fast as a jab. You do um it is if you want this, you it it's not it's a little hit a little bit hit confirmable, but if you're not too sure, you could just do this. And uh, you, you're uh, neutral with your opponent, so nobody's at an advantage, but at least you were able to shut them down from whatever they were trying to do or were doing. Like I said before, back off. Chill out. Take a, take a, take a chill pill, bro. Chill out. That's what that is. You're doing too much. That's the best way I can explain it. You're doing too much. So uh, use this string when, some, when people are just going crazy in your face. Just doing shit, press some crazy buttons. This is just step back. Take a step back. That's what that move is. Um, I forgot to talk about that in my other tutorial, the large tutorial, uh, tutorial, but that's what that string is used for. Take advantage of it. Use it when people are going ape shit crazy on you and they're just pressing buttons. Um, uh, so yeah, that that is. Uh, a decent string. Uh, oh, his uh, his uh, uh, stance cancel. Um, this is a this is a, a a useful tool that I or useful thing that I try to do sometimes to employ a mix up and kind of keep them guessing. So you could kind of. Uh, this is kind of good to go for on knockdown. So, like, say you knock them down. Oh wait, hold on. Let's say you knock them down. You could be uh, quick in their face, but be careful though. If you knock them down, they can spring kick. But um, if they spring kick, um, that they just know that they are taking a risk because you can actually launch them as the large player. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So you can juggle them if they do that. So keep in mind. Um, they, your opponent is taking a risk if they try to spring kick. So uh, don't be afraid to throw that out um, after you knock them down. So uh, definitely uh, utilize his dynamic entry uh, two after the knockdown. In case you see them trying to spring kick, because if they try to spring kick, you get a launch. Yeah. So definitely try to uh, throw out those dynamic entry twos if on knockdown. Um, and they cannot uh, press on that because if they do, that's a counterhand launcher. They do not have enough frames to uh, press on that. So if you see them, uh, if you see them like trying to press a button on, on uh, knockdown like that, you can just know that you can shut that down. Um, so yeah, that's one thing. That's how to use. Uh, that's one thing on how to uh, utilize uh, uh, Lars's um, Oki on knockdown. Um, now if you knock them down and let's say that, uh, let's say that they stay on the ground, this hits grounded. So if you keep, if you see, and sometimes people do this, they'll stay on the ground to the point where, um, I'll keep hitting them and they'll, uh, and they still won't get up. So, and then remember you can delay this. You can see if they're going to get up or not. Get up. Get up. Get up off the floor. Get up and take the mix up. Get up and take the mix up. When you knock somebody down, uh, you can force them to uh, 
Oh, excuse me. Your first step to uh, take the mix up because they don't want to be eating this over and over again, right? And once they get up, that's when you can start uh, employing mix up. So he kind of cut he, in that regard. He kind of um, follows the Mishima playstyle in terms of knock down, knock them down, force them to get up. Once they get up, employ mix up. So uh, that's one thing. That's how you uh, can utilize his Oki after his back three four or just on knockdown in general. So you could do that. Um, this low down one plus two, not great. I don't use this like that. It has good range. I talked about this before in my other video. Not great. Um, I use it sometimes just to get a knockdown. But again, it's launch punishable on block. I, I don't use it like that. Uh, um, this move. Uh, I use this move a fair amount. Um, it is launch punishable on block, but nobody ever really launch punishes it. Um, uh, so this move is good. Um, it is a very, it has a very good hitbox. It's low hitting mid. So use this for characters that kind of like to stay on the ground. So characters like Zafina or Xiaoyu, you can get them. So like, let's say you know they're crawling to you or they're like really low to the ground. Shut that shit down. Get away from me. It's fast, it's 13 frames, it's as fast as a down forward one. And when you need a good mid to a good reliable mid to get people out of stances that are naturally evasive, use this. This is your go-to mid. It's basically, I, I love this move. I mean, I, I hate that it's launch punishable, but I love it because it's basically a fuck off button. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're in stance, huh? Fuck off. <laughs> so, um, it's used in his wall combo, but I still use it um, as just a, a, a quick, like, fuck off button. So, uh, so this, is, this move would be your best friend against characters that are just naturally evasive. Like Xiaoyu, like I said, Xiaoyu, Zafina, um, Eddie, when he gets here. Um, so keep that in mind. Keep this mid in mind. His 4 1 plus 4 is a very good mid. It is unsafe, but... I guarantee you, as a Fina and a Shao, you're not gonna launch punish that. They don't know. They don't know Lars. They're not gonna do it. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if they do, if they do actually punish you, then I mean, hey, now you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, his back four, 15 frames, counter hit, still the same property, 55 damage, still chunky. Um, this is your go-to mid if you uh, are plus, like I said before. Like I said, if you're on silent entry, this would be your go-to mid to shut the shut that down. Um, but if you do a heat engager, you are a hella plus. They can't do anything. They have to guess. So you can do whatever. You can pretty much do whatever you want when you hit them with a heat engager. You're far too plus for them to be doing anything. They can't do anything in that situation. They have to guess. So um, that's one thing. Um, his down one plus two. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to go in my in front of my opponent's face, duck, and then sometimes do a wall standing two to get the plus frame because they see me ducking, they might want to uh, uh, block this this low. Uh, but yeah, um, everything is pretty much still the same. Besides that, um, he is he is stronger in Tekken Eight. Don't get me wrong, he definitely is stronger, but the framework is still there. So you still have your Back three forward stance, four two one stance, four one two stance. Um, you still have forward one two three, still a counter hit launcher the three. Um, you have uh, you know your your down back four. You still have your orbital. You still have Lars is it's it's Lars. It's a buffed Lars. It's just a buffed Lars. That's the best way I can put it. He's buffed. Um, he is stronger. But the framework is still there. He still mechanically is the same. So, um, he just has a couple more uh, toys to play with now. Um, so yeah, I think that is about it for the most part. But like I said before, you can be very tricky with Lars. You can get very creative with him. 
Um, his wall sitting three is also a launcher. I forgot to mention that. Whoops. It is a launcher. So, uh, definitely keep that in mind. Um, so that's one thing. Um, yeah, so I do 4-3 up, 4-3 up to cancel um, the stances. So you could do that. Yeah, man, the sky's the limit with large. You could just do... You could get so creative with... Yeah, you could, get, you could just get hella creative with Lars, man. The sky's the limit with him. Um, once you start getting used to the stances and how to apply the stances and how to utilize your plus frames and connect uh, piece, uh, pieces by pieces, you, you can make Lars very difficult and very dangerous. So, um, uh, also, Lars would... Uh, he uh, works better if you know your opponent's character as well. So if you if you were able to punish your opponent accordingly with the right frames, Lars will benefit heavily from that. Minus 15, I got you. Lars got you. Minus 14, I got you. Minus 12, I got you. Uh, minus 13, I got you. Everything, everything that uh, that is uh, Lars basically has. Um, uh, frames like he has punishment for every tier of frame now so he has 10 frame 10 to 11 frame 12 frame 12 to 13 frame uh, 14 frame and 15 frame so Lars's punishment is very good it's, it was good in Tekken 7 but it, it's it's uh, it's I'd say it's better now because I mean this string alone is good it's very good um, you could do a lot just off of a jab, uh, uh, jab punish. So that's a very good string. Um, so yeah, um, I think that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for my Tekken 8 Lars tutorial guide. Um, definitely a fun character. He's absolutely fun to play. Um, you can definitely make him a problem if you know how to use him control his speed and control his frames and make your opponent second guess you are a mix-up machine now you are very fast you're very gimmicky you can be uh, difficult to deal with so um, but again you have to you know what you're doing utilize your tools right use them correctly and I guarantee you you'll be a Tekken God Prime in no time um, uh, not not to you know I don't mean to like uh, gas myself up or anything but I'm just I'm just speaking off of the the fights that I've had um, I've only lost I can count I've probably fought like 200 plus people at this point and I can count on my fan how many times I've lost I only lost like three times and the two two of them were my friends <laughs> so you can make Lars an absolute headache to deal with and I love it because he deserves it so um, definitely, 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 definitely play this character, have fun with him. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, just, uh, go off, have fun. But, um, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I will definitely be putting out more Lars content for you guys. I'm sorry. I have my upload game kind of been a week lately, uh, kind of been busy with other stuff. But without further ado, this has been Nico's World. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, peace. Deuces. Thanks for watching.